objective geology multiple choice questions with answers so this is a solved question paper of uh, cbrt assistant hydrogeologist 2019 question paper and i hope uh, this solved question paper is useful for various competitive exams like csr net gate gsi and other exams welcome to set 3 coming to the first question which one of the following is a phosphatic microfossil choices are a foraminifera b radiolaria c coccolithophore and d conodons so conodons is a phosphatic microfossil phosphatic microfossils these are notably conodons these are composed of crystallites of calcium phosphate or apatite uh, which are embedded in an organic matrix and these microfossils are made of uh, hydroxyl apatite a phosphatic mineral and the conodont elements they can be extracted from rock using the adequate solvents so conodons are an uh, example of a phosphatic microfossil next question which of the following is not a seed fern a pecopteris b neuropteris c elethopteris d glossopteris glossopteris is not a seed fern so d is the correct option next question the capability of a sensor to discriminate the smallest object on the ground of different sizes usually specified in linear dimension is known as a spatial resolution b spectral resolution c radiometric resolution and d temporal resolution so the correct answer is spatial resolution spatial resolution it refers to the size of the smallest feature that can be detected by a satellite sensor or displayed in a satellite image it is usually presented as a single value representing the length of one side of a square so the capability of the sensor to discriminate even the smallest object on the ground of different sizes usually in one particular uh, linear dimension is known as a spatial resolution a is the correct option next question which one of the following is not a spatial data so very simple question a location of the city b location of the river c temperature of the city and d location of the hill so obviously temperature of the city is not a spatial data c is the correct option next question which one of the following is not related to topology a adjacency b containment and c connectivity and uh, d attribute data so attribute data is not related to topology d is the correct answer. next question which one of the following non spatial scales would you select for recording of snow depth in gis database a nominal scale b ratio scale c ordinal scale and d interval scale so generally ratio scale it's a this is a, a non spatial scale this is selected for recording of snow depth in gis database b is the correct option next question what is the spatial resolution of lis3 camera of irs 1c options are a 72 meters b 36 meters c 23.5 meters and d 6 meters so the correct answer is c 23.5 meters so list 3 camera it provides multispectral data in four bands the spatial resolution for visible that is for two bands and uh, near infrared one band is 23.5 meters uh, with a ground swath of uh, 141 kilometers the fourth band that is of a uh, short wave infrared band it has a spatial resolution of 70.5 meters with a ground swath of 148 kilometers the spatial resolution for list 3 camera of irs 1c is 23.5 meters c is the correct option next question the majority of the earth's uh, iron and nickel are found in this is also a very simple question a lower crust b upper crust c upper mantle and d inner core so majority of the earth's iron and nickel are found in inner core so the, and that's why the core is also known as nife nife that is uh, it refers to the core of the earth nickel and iron the innermost layer of the earth is the core with a radius of about uh, 3500 kilometers and the core is uh, made up of very heavy materials generally iron and nickel so d is the correct option inner core next question consider the following statements regarding continental crust and oceanic crust one continental crust is less dense and thicker than the oceanic crust two continental crust is poor in iron and magnesium three continental crust is rich in iron and magnesium four continental crust is more dense and thinner than the oceanic crust which of the statements given is correct a one only b one and two 
C214 and the 1 and 3. So of these statements, which of the following is the correct? So both 1 and 2 are correct. The continental crust is less dense and thicker when compared to the oceanic crust. And uh, continental crust is poorer in iron and magnesium. So this is, uh, so that's why both 1 and 2 are the correct. B is the correct option. Next question. Mercury is the pathfinder element for A, copper deposits, B, lead zinc deposits, C, chromite deposits and D, uranium deposits. So mercury is the pathfinder for uh, lead, zinc and silver deposits, that is base metals. Uh, mercury has uh, long been uh, regarded as a potential pathfinder for base and precious metals and it has been recognized as an indicator element for both noble and base metal deposits. So, B is the correct option. Next question. Gosan is used to identify a buried A, sulphide deposit of epigenetic origin, B, auriferous vein and C, copper porphyry deposit and the multi-mineral zinc silver deposit. So, Gosan it is used to identify buried uh, sulphide deposit of epigenetic origin. So, Gosan uh, it is a rust colored oxide and hydroxide minerals of iron and magnesium that cap and ore deposit. So, what is a Gosan? It is nothing but a rust colored oxide and hydroxide minerals of iron and manganese which will cap the deposit. And uh, Gosans they form by the oxidation of the sulphide minerals in an ore deposit and uh, thus they may be used as a clues to the existence of a subsurface ore deposit especially if uh, distinctive box works are present. So Gosan is used uh, to identify a buried sulphide deposit of epigenetic origin. A is the correct option. Next question. Radon or uh, that is uh, uh, radon 222 is uh, gas is used in prospecting for a uranium b thorium c silver and d antimony so radon is used for prospecting uranium radon has uh, proven useful in exploring for not only uranium but for other associated elements also it has uh, also been used successfully in exploring of geothermal sources and also in earthquake prediction and in many other applications so a uranium is the correct Next question. The most important hydrochemical indicator for petroleum is A. Naphthenates, B. Ethanol, C. Humic acids and D. Brines. So, the most important hydrochemical indicator of petroleum is naphthenates. Uh, the, uh, so, naphthenes, uh, naphthenates, uh, nothing but these are the cycloalkanes or cycloparaffins. These are also called as the naphthenes uh, in the petroleum industry. These are saturated hydrocarbons containing structures with carbon atoms uh, linked in a ring-like fashion. So, A in aphthenates is the correct option. Next question. Which one of the following is not a manganese mineral? A. Pyrolusite, B. Sitaparite and uh, C. Rendenbergite and D. Smithsonite. So, the correct option is D. Smithsonite. Smithsonite is nothing but zinc carbonate that is ZnCO3. It is a mineral that was the principal source of the zinc until 1880s uh, when it was replaced by spalarite. And it is uh, ordinarily found in the oxidized zone of the deposits as a secondary mineral or it can be also find as an alteration product of primary zinc minerals. So, smithsonite is not a manganese mineral. Next question. Which one of the following deposits does not occur in Archean greenstone belts? A. Gold. B. Platinum. C. Aluminium. D. Chromite. So, the deposit which is not, which will not occur in the Archean greenstone belts is obviously aluminium. Whereas you can see uh, the gold, platinum and chromite you can see in the Archean greenstone belts. C. Aluminium is the correct option. Next question. Which one of the following deposits formed at oceanic ridges? A. Sulphide, B. Carbonate, C. Oxide and D. Phosphate. So, sulphide deposits are formed at oceanic ridges. Uh, the neo-volcanic zones of uh, mid-oceanic ridges, these are the host to seawater uh, which are derived by hydrothermal system forming uh, seafloor massive sulphide deposits. These are also known as SMS deposits that is seafloor massive sulphide deposits and these deposits have high concentration of base metals and potentially uh, these are the economic enrichment of a wide range of the trace elements as well. So, A sulphide is the correct answer. Next question. The K3 belt of Rajasthan is famous for it is a very simple and straightforward question. So, K3 copper belt, K3 is well known for copper that is uh, uh, the choices are A gold, B iron, C copper and D coal and K3 this is situated in the foothills of the Aravalli range uh, which hosts copper mineralization giving rise to 80 kilometers long metallogenic province from Singhana in the north to Raghunathgarh in the south and this is popularly known as K3 copper belt. C is the correct.
Next question. Which one of the following ore deposits having ferruginous character occur in Kalahandi area of Odisha? A. Bauxite. B. Copper. C. Galena. D. Diamond. Which deposits uh, have ferruginous character in Kalahandi area of Odisha? So that is the correct option is Bauxite. Kalahandi is famous for the production of the Bauxite. It is located in Odisha. And other Bauxite minerals in India, uh, these are seen in the Sambalpur also. So A. Bauxite is the correct answer. Next question. The method which involves the forceful injection of slurry of water and cement into the fractured rocks of the site is known as A. Backfilling, B. Lining, C. Cement stabilization and D. Grouting. So the, uh, the correct option is grouting. So grouting involves the injection of the appropriate materials and a pressure into certain parts of the earth's crust through specially constructed holes or openings in order to fill and uh, therefore you can also seal, seal voids, cracks, seams, fissures or other cavities in soils or rock strata. So the method which involves the forceful injection of a cement and water into the fractured rocks at the site is known as a grouting. B is the correct option. Next question. The walls constructed on both sides of the crust of a dam are known as A. Retaining walls, B. Key walls, C. Safety walls and D. Parapet walls. So the walls constructed on both sides of the crust of a dam are known as the parapet walls. These are uh, the low protective walls on either side of the roadway or the walkway on the crust of a dam. So the walls constructed on both sides of the crust of a dam are known as the parapet walls. D is the correct option. Hope you have followed these questions and uh, thank you for your time. See you in the next video.